Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome to the official Xbox podcast. We're back this week. No Jack, but instead we traded a Jack for a Jeff. <laughs> so, I don't I, go to theme parks. I'm sorry. You do. It's you, not my theme. You do go to theme parks. I don't, I don't willingly go to theme parks. I, I very much enjoyed listening to the show last week. Jack is awesome. Super nice guy. Yeah. Um, obviously knows his his Disneyland from his Disney Sea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> have you ever been to Disney Sea? I've you you mentioned this, but I've been on the train yeah. going from there. It is <laughs> there it Tokyo is. Central to you pass you pass not only do you pass Disney Sea, but what I would you pass a Costco, and I want to know what's in Tokyo Costco. Uh, or it's Chiba bu- Costco. it's I believe I it's a know. double decker Costco too. Remember, because it's massive right there in Chiba. It's anyway. I, that's that's my Disneyland, Larry. Give me samples. <laughs> Get me a chicken bake. I wonder if they have chicken bakes. I'm sure oh, there's man. a I'm sure there's a nice uh, Japanese take on the chicken no, bake. 150 yen hot dog is, is oh. Minnesota. Anyway, welcome welcome back. You were got you were out last week. Actually, the past couple weeks you were out, right? Two, Two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. Uh, um, the, the show didn't fall apart. The ratings are up probably but it's good to be back likes no no and and rebecca is out as you can see it was off last week and she's everybody's taking these two weeks i don't know when i'm gonna i may take the next uh the week after next off we'll figure that out but we're all back together at least Ooh. jeff and i are so that's the most we important do a show without you the answer is probably not well you're welcome to you're welcome to do the show without me i just don't know you know if you've got I'm all the gear hit the buttons yeah you know, I'm, I'm, we don't yeah, this is this is rather. I've got a quite a complicated setup here that I've. Re- Thank you, by the way, for for Jeff for coming on the journey with me as we solve our audio issues, our video issues, the look of the show, the whole nine yards. Look at this. We've got this beautiful sort of like I don't know scenic background. Well, do you know, you know what we this is, right? A year and a half ago, we were like stick figures talking through mm. cans on screen, Grunt, grunting with fire. Uh, yeah, this banging is, rocks together. This is actually one of the uh, this is actually one of the backgrounds um, that's available on Xbox Series X and S. This motion one, so that's I like. I, I look. I'm trying to make it uh, trying to make it thematic. But anyway, let's let's talk about uh, what we're going, what we're playing. We got some great interviews this week. Uh, I did a couple. Jeff did one. We're going to talk about that. Um, tell me about. Uh, tell me what you've been up to. Tell me what you've been playing, Jeff. Actually, wait a minute. That appears to be a new what? set you're in. Well, I moved. I moved houses. <laughs> That's and, right. Uh, still, this is very temporary. I'm like, let me just throw a TV in the background to cover up all the mess because there's there's much of it. But uh, eventually, we'll, we'll get in the right progress. I only have one light on because I can't find the plug to you. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it'll get there. Um, we're we're going to get there. Wired. You can help me network because I'm, there's no I, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is bad. I am coming over to your house uh, this weekend, and I am going to have my... Uh, you know, my little tool belt on and I'll be, you know, I'll be in the, I'll be in your, I don't want to see any crack when you bend over Larry. I cannot get proper size pants. (laughs) There may or may not be. I don't know. Uh, Oh, here. I see the problem, Jeff. (laughs) Yeah. I see the problem now too, buddy. (laughs) Oh man. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, so I've been on vacation, but, uh, like every time I go on vacation, uh, pack this little this little, little little thing oh it's out of the shot there you go you see the series s it's plugged in i shouldn't have grabbed it um but just it's so easy to put the series s in your backpack and and take it with you and i get to we we're staying at an airbnb in in, in bend oregon home of oh. the, the last blockbuster yeah and we roll into there and they had a room with like a computer monitor and i was like don't mind if i do and um what did i do downloaded the back for blood uh, beta yeah. and oh, I played that as well. Larry. I played that as well. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. We did. How did we not play together? Uh, you were, you were, uh, so you I were off. Play. I saw your Instagram. You were off hiking and visiting the last blockbuster, like you said, and some other stuff. So it just our timing wasn't working out. But you're back. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I got to play right before I went on vacation with some media folks. A couple gentlemen from from Destructoid, and then Mike from Xbox Wire. I got to tell you, probably the most fun. I've had in a multiplayer game all gear. It, it was was that couple of hours we were playing through Act One of Back for Blood. Yeah. We just teamwork. We all sort of fell in, into a good groove. 
there's some great set pieces in what we played. I'm sure some of you out there have played, but like, you know, trying to board up the church or get off the ship. And I got knocked off the end of the water and died. And uh, we just barely made it through. And, and that Fun was like the sign of a good, a good co-op experience. So I can't wait to play Back for Blood. Of course, coming to Xbox Game Pass for console and for PC this fall. And uh, I know I'm going to be playing just a ton of that. So then when I got out to, to Oregon, we ended up playing through it again because, hey, why not? Uh, and, uh, yeah. Other than that, just playing, still playing Octopath Traveler. I'm starting to get worried. Like too many games are coming out. There, there was no slow summer this year. No, no. There was like, there was maybe a couple weeks there where there wasn't anything big, and that was like, well, let me take on this 80 plus hour RPG. Uh, Octopath you love your Traveler RPGs. On the game Pass. I do, and this one's really good. But I'm only like, I don't know, 15, 20 hours in, and games are starting to come out and on the horizon you see you see the you know you see the autumn and fall and all the games going to come marching towards yeah i mean we're in it now hades is out today and then 12 minutes is out next week and there's some other stuff we'll be talking about and it's at madden and it's coming and and it's just you know you've got it you're going to be interviewing someone from the madden team who I've, i've known for a long time actually and uh that is usually back in the day that was the unofficial start of the holiday season was when Madden came out and yeah. then they would start. But now it's like, to your point, everything's coming out all the time. Yeah. That's just the sign of like, it, that's like when you're on the freeway and the speed limit goes from 45 to 65 and you're like, Oh, I'm going to step on the gas. And that's, that's the games industry kind of does that. Once you have Madden, great. You're just, you're just going to see a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, coming out through the, you know, the rest of the year, obviously we know we're, we're getting ready very soon for, for Psychonauts two, And then yeah. we'll be playing, uh, Far Cry and we'll be playing uh, Halo. Force Horizon, we're playing <laughs> Halo Infinite, of course. Um, and so there's just, uh, I mean, there's other stuff we I didn't even get to, but it, man, we, this is going to be, it's going to be a very good holiday. It sure is. Uh, I've been playing. So I, what have I been playing? I'm playing Death Store. I'm still playing Death Store. Uh, oh, with- good. You stuck with? Have you beat the Witch yet? No. <laughs> okay. That, I, I think that's like about the one third point in the game. I think yeah. it, you know was, I, the, the good thing about that game. I would say is you, it's challenging, but it's fair. I'm, I'm having. I'm actually. Not, I'm actually at one of the pot-headed bosses before then, so I'm having a little difficulty. Oh, okay. I, I just keep going away and coming it's back. It's not easy, right? No, it's it it's not an easy it's, game. it's unforgiving. So, Death Store. What else am I playing? Uh, back for Blood. Uh, Katamari. You don't see your TV. You got the wrong angle. You ch- We're just seeing this beautiful background you got well, there. Well, that's because I got some stuff over here I can't show, but um, okay. Katamari. I love Katamari. It's just such a... <laughs> it's, it's just such a goofy game. Takahashi. Doesn't yeah. have a new game. I feel like Takahashi has a new game. Uh, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Katamari, love the theme song to Katamari, of course. Da, 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 da. Uh, and then I finished the third, um, the third chapter in um, a pirate's life for Sea of Thieves. So, oh, good, yeah, uh, that's a meaty update. And and that particular third chapter, if you haven't played, that's I don't remember which one that one is called, but it's 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 really. It is the most like the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction in terms of like being on it that I've ever felt. It was, I just, I, I need to go back and play it again. I just had such a good time. So, yeah, you, uh, cool. you very quickly surpassed me. I would, I need to get in there and, and pick up. I'm still, I think it was at the end of the first, first act. Oh, really? Show. Yeah. We, well, I'm happy to ju- dive back in. Because I have, I played each of the each of the chapters. I think there's five total. I, I mean, like I said, I'm on the third. I played each one twice because I play it first for the first time, and then I go back and try to 100 percent it. So yep. I I've got 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. So I'm I'm cooking along there, and I I'd, I'd, I'd love to help you 100 percent it, Jeffrey. I would love I would love to 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 do that. Now that I'm here, I've got my setup. I got my house. You'll help me with the the internet Wi-Fi. Taking you up on it. Well, that's I'm I'm happy I'm happy to lead, that someone can use my skills. That's that's I'm happy. I don't know what a mesh that. network is, but I imagine you put a whole net around the whole house. That's right, and that keeps the internet in because it's right now it's leaking out the windows or whatever. <laughs> it's going. It's, I don't know where it's going. It's going down the street to your hipster coffee shop. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a Viking bar down at the corner, <laughs> so they're sucking up all my internet. <sighs> it's so. Okay. It's good to have you back. Um, Rebecca will be back. I think she'll be back next week. She, like I said, she's on uh, annual leave, I believe is what we call it. Right? I, I mean, we do now. I don't know what it's called. Every uh, year? Sorry, I'm on annual leave. We got a Gotta bunch go. of news coming up. Jeff's going to do that later on. You know what I have here? I'll, I'll mm. give you 
clue. We're going to go into the interviews now, but I will just tell you something, Jeffrey. Go on. What? Are you going to be unboxing something? I have something here. It's something that's already been announced. So it's, it's, I finally got a hard copy, uh, a hard, a real life version of the Aqua <gasps> Shift controller. I haven't seen that in person yet. Yep. All so right. I, w- I, right. I was able to get one of the very, very first ones off of the, uh, from our marketing team off the production line. So Hot I'm going to, I've got two gloves ready to do. So we'll do that after the break. But um, why don't you tell us what we have for interviews? Cause we've got some pretty good stuff this week. Actually, yeah, let, let's talk about that. I know that I'll be inter- in, uh, interviewing the executive producer of, uh, or senior producer yep. of the Madden NFL series. And we've been talking about some new stuff coming there and what they're doing with, uh, with Next Gen, because it's the first you know proper at launch Next Gen Madden yep. game. But yep. you're speaking with some folks who are updating their titles as well. Yeah, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about I Am Dead, which is a brand new title, Wilmot's Warehouse. I know you talked to, to oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Rebecca Thought there from the, from the creators of Wilmot Warehouse. And then Unturned. Unturned is amazing because uh, this this gentleman his name is Nelson. Uh, yes, he's he's Citizen Nelson versus Major Nelson. See how I did that, Jeffrey? Oh, I see. What, yeah, uh, the show's not the show is big enough for two Nelsons. Uh, he he he's going to talk about his journey into creating. He started in Roblox, and he's going to talk about his journey into creating his own game. So let's uh, let's listen to the real Nelson on how he does that. Unturned, available on Xbox probably almost a year now, uh, is getting uh, an enhancement for Xbox Series X and S. And I'm very excited today to be joined by Nelson Sexton, who's the man, the myth, the legend, the single soul developer behind this title. Nelson, good to see you. Hi, uh, good to see you too. It's nice to meet you. Uh, the- I've no, it's it's it, it's it's great to have you on. I mean, it's it's I've been watching your your career grow. You've had quite the career over the past uh, decade or so. Can you g- give us a little bit about your career, and then I'd like to talk about the game itself because it's it's amazing. It's an amazing story. Thank you. So I uh, first started working on this project back on Roblox. That would be back in uh, around 2012, 2013, and then I uh, took it into a Unity project, and I've been working on that for the last eight or so years. Uh, we launched on Steam in 2014, uh, and as you mentioned, we launched on Xbox last uh, last November, I think. Um, and so uh, it's been a big journey. We did early access for a few years. We came out of early access in 2017. Um, and uh, you say I'm the guy behind it. I did a lot of the original stuff. Now we've got uh, a big team of community members who are helping with the game. Um, we've got 505 who are uh, doing the console versions. And so um, I, I'm very lucky to have a, a lot of people helping out now. But I, th- I think the most important thing here is the fact that this you are a, a single individual who started on Roblox, came up with this idea, and, and we'll talk about the game Unturned in just a minute. Uh, and then you 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 basically said, I, I this is so good, I want to make this into its standalone game, and that and that's what you did. It's it's a free to play survival game. So it's it's that's an amazing. How did you make that jump from okay, I'm in this Roblox where I, I you know I'm given tools versus now I have to go make my tools. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... Let's see. So I think um, the jump was kind of that I wanted to take the game further. There were, I think Roblox has grown a lot and they have a ton of incredible features that I wish I'd had back then. Um, but at the time, it was kind of like uh, the ways that I wanted to push the game forward were things that I couldn't really do on Roblox at the time. And so it was a bit of a challenge moving over from, from Roblox to Unity. And um, for example, Roblox, of course, hosts all the servers for you. Yeah. And so uh, going from uh, they, they're managing all the technical details to then, oh my gosh, this is so much more complicated than I thought. I feel bad for complaining about Roblox because, <laughs> uh, of course, what I built, especially back then, was not as good as Roblox, at least on the server or the, uh, the network end of things. Um, but that's improved a bit over time, and um, I, I would definitely still recommend anyone who's interested in getting started with game development, uh, give Roblox a try. Because yeah, it certainly worked for you. Now, tell us a little bit about Unturned, and I've got some video here, and, I, and so we're just going to play that, but tell us what the game is about and what the core, as we say in the industry, what the core gameplay loop is like. Sure. So Unturned is, I mean, it sounds kind of cliche. It's a survival sandbox, base building type game. Uh, the gameplay loop is sort of you start out with nothing, you scavenge for supplies, or depending on the map, you um, will either craft uh, your way towards the end game, or you will uh, work your way through the progression of the map. Um, 
And then since it's uh, typically a multiplayer PvP game, you are building your base and raiding other players' bases and um, competing Appar- with them. Apparently the killing resources. zombies as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I guess uh, I neglected to mention that in the list of cliches. It's got uh, a lot of different types of zombies, um, and so they're kind of the main PvE threat in the world. Um, there's also a lot of quests, and um, depending on the map, there's the new map that's coming out in September has probably the most extensive quests of any of the maps. Um, I, I don't know how good a summary that was. <laughs> That, that was pretty good. Now, now tell us about you. you we talked about it. It's, it's, you know, you're doing some enhancements for Xbox Series X and S. So tell us a little bit about what those enhancements are. Right. So uh, 505 are uh, updating the game. They're bringing the engine version up. They're bringing some of the uh, new uh, features and um, progress from the PC uh, version. They are adding the uh, translations as part of the Xbox Series update. Um, and so that's going to be automatic with the, uh, I think, smart delivery. The players will get the, the correct version for their console. Yep. Um, and, and so primarily they're focused on uh, bringing the game further along. It's, uh, it, it's not going to be so much a graphical update, maybe some performance benefits, uh, but they're also bringing a lot of new fixes. And uh, the development team has changed now. Uh, Cradle Games, based out of Quebec, they're doing the development now. And so there should be more frequent updates and patches to the console editions. How, um, how, how does it feel as a developer? You know, you started out in Roblox and you, you broke out on your own and created this title. How does it feel to, that you have other teams working on your baby? That's got to be of interesting. It's got to feel very different, doesn't it? Uh, it is pretty crazy. Uh, it, it's, it's been a big, a big journey. Um, I think... It's been really interesting to hear some of their thoughts on like uh, what problems they ran into with the game or uh, th- things that I've learned from them as part of working on it and uh, trying to preserve the original vision of the game while also trying to be collaborative and understanding that things need to change. Um, it, there's, it's been touched by a lot of different teams at this point, um, like mentioning that it, it's moved to Cradle Games now. It was with... Uh, another developer in between Fun Labs and Cradle Games. I'm not sure if, how public that is, but um, it, it's had a long history. Yeah. The console version. Now, I, you know, one thing I was reading, and I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when when you released the title, you were just 16 years old, right? Yeah, when I did the Steam release, I was 16, and so uh, that was kind of difficult balancing school and full time <laughs> game development. I suppose doing the I was doing a Steam update every Friday, so it was kind of rushed to get all my homework done and then be ready to release an update on the Friday, because uh, of course that was during early access. And uh, so I think, yeah, the Steam release initially in 2014, I was 16, and then that was already based on a bunch of code I'd written when I was 14 and 15. And so then now, of course, I'm still improving the PC version, which means there's all this really old code that. <laughs> it's a bit of difficult to maintain, but yeah. Um, I wonder if you have the same. I've worked with a lot of developers over the years, Nelson. I wonder if you have the same uh, kind of thing where you go back to the code you wrote three, four, five, six, seven years ago, and you're like, I can't believe I wrote this. This is terrible. <laughs> yep that uh, that's very relatable. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. I mean, that's amazing that you balance school and obviously that you graduated school and you, you're in game development full time. When when you look out there. Um, and you're you're based up in 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 Canada in Calgary, correct? Yep, that's right. When when you look out there around the world at people that are doing game development and, and young kids and 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 young boys and girls that are growing up, what would you? What are some of the tips you would give them? Like maybe, hey, graduate school first before you go into game development. <laughs> what what could you if you could give a couple of tips since you've been down this road? Thanks. I think. I would recommend the opposite, do game development as soon as possible. I mean, I was doing game development. I did uh, Game Maker for a few years before I went to Roblox. I did Roblox for three or four years before I went on to Unity. Um, and so I think it's definitely something you can learn online. There's a lot of amazing resources online uh, to go learn that. And um, I think I, I do get emails from uh, younger developers interested in getting started. And often I recommend um, 
make as many projects as you can. I mean, some of them, some some people are interested in the first thing they make. They want it to be the big thing that they release and work on for a while. Uh, but Unturned is definitely not the first game I made. I must have made a few hundred games by this point. And so, just keep going, and you'll learn a lot, and uh, eventually you'll find something that sticks. You know, it's interesting because you you do bring that up. Is that people think that 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 their first game or their first thing is going to be a masterpiece and it's going to be what they're known for. But that's never the case. I mean, you need to learn and hone your craft. And, and you said you built a hundred games or so. And over those course of those hundred games, you learned how to code, how to develop a game, how to do graphics, all the different parts of it, that, that, that was the road, the journey that brought you to unturned and without it, you couldn't have made unturned, right? No, definitely not. I think uh, I definitely learned a lot along the way, and I, I still am. I try to, you know, be learning new new techniques, new approaches to things uh, on the weekends. Uh, definitely always trying to learn more. There's there's so much to learn. Well, I got to tell you, you're a huge inspiration for a lot of people. I'm sure that are watching and listening to this because people, you know, all, you know a lot of a lot of folks want to be game developers and they don't know where to start. And I think kind of what I'm hearing from you is, if you don't know where to start, just make your first game, even your first Hello World, your first anything. You know, make the character walk across the screen or anything, just to get the concept of coding down, right? Definitely, definitely. Anything you can do to get started is a good step. Uh, I don't think there's any bad steps. Uh, what, and regardless of whether you're writing code or you're using something like visual scripting blueprints in Unreal or you're doing uh, scripting Lua in Roblox, um, there's so many different good ways to start, I think. You also, uh, before I let you go, I was also reading you have some downloadable content coming up uh, available. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, the plan is 505 uh, licensed one of the big community-made maps for PC. Mm -hmm. or, that was a confusing way to word it. Uh, one of the big community-created updates on PC was a map called Elver, uh, which is probably one of the best maps in the game, uh, which is why I recommend to them that they prioritize that one. Right. And so uh, it is um, a lot more combat-focused. Uh, it's got a lot of endgame uh, progression, and so the way that's going to work is... Uh, it's going to be a DLC on uh, console, and uh, if you purchase the DLC, I think it's five dollars is the plan. Then you can host a server. Uh, you can use five hundred five servers, which are free to host on, right. um, and then all your friends can join. They don't have to get the DLC. And when is that going to be coming out? Uh, that's going to be coming out sometime in September. That's fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Nelson Secton, you are the man behind Unturned. You you are the originator of uh, of Unturned, and now a lot of other folks work on that. I want to thank you for stopping by. Thank you for telling us about the downloadable content, the updates coming to Xbox Series X and S. Really exciting. And I, I, again, congratulations on the success you've had, and I wish you more success in the future. Thanks, and thanks for having me on. Now, as you're watching or listening to this podcast, I'm well aware you're probably broiling with some of the hottest weather in the summers going across a huge chunk of the country. But I want you to envision three months from now, getting ready to tuck into that turkey. Hopefully you're watching the Cowboys lose at home and the blur of Christmas and Thanksgiving and Halloween and the first day of fall and the first day of school. For me, that whole process to get to that point, it all happens at one moment. And it starts when Madden comes out every year. And guess what? We're getting really close to the launch of Madden NFL 22. And to celebrate this, I'd like to welcome now Mike Mahar, the senior producer of the Madden NFL franchise. You're in one of those tropical places. I know Madden is made in the Orlando area. So thanks for joining us from Florida. Uh, thanks for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it. So, I, you know, I'm thinking about Madden. How is John Madden? Is, he's got to be in his 80s now. Does he still consult on the games? or what, what's, what's John Madden's involvement in, in Madden here in, in the year 2021? Yeah, what a great question. He does. It's incredible. The, the, uh, the, the access that we have and the consultation with, we, we is still strong with, with, with Coach Madden. The team, uh, um, our senior uh, gameplay designers, uh, they still consult on a regular basis with him. Uh, he's still actively involved. And I think what's even actually more interesting is that his passion for Madden being a tool to attract a, a, a new generation, a younger generation of kids uh, into uh, you know football and the NFL and, and, and teaching them game. His passion for that is undiminished. Like it hasn't changed a bit uh, over the 20 plus years we've been working with him, which honestly uh, is incredible. And it says it speaks volumes, uh, you know, about him and his character. 
You know what? That just totally fits. You can you can still just imagine him being excited as you're showing him new features and oh stuff God, like that. Yeah. And you right? And you mentioned generations. And if we go back a year ago, uh, you'd be preparing for Madden NFL 21 to be released on the previous generation on on Xbox One. And I know that when Xbox Series X and S came out, that that Madden NFL 21 optimized. But now you've got a season under your belt. You know, you don't judge a a coach and what they can do if they come in in the middle of the season. You want to see what they can do with a full off season. And and here you are getting ready for the first release that on day one will be on next-gen consoles. Still will be available on Xbox One, of course, but on Xbox Series X and S. I know you're preparing a series of features that are exclusive to this this new generation. So why don't you talk about just the experience of, of now working with Xbox Series X and S and what you're able to do what what's unlocked by this new generation and the power there? Yeah, it's a great question, Jeff. Like, how are we maximizing our, our the experience on on Xbox next gen consoles? And you know, there's there's some obvious ways we're doing that. Uh, you know, that that players can expect to to see in Madden 22, which are just the the sheer horsepower that that the console that uh, gives us to present the game, um, make the graphics and enhance the graphics and the presentation around the field. But probably the biggest uh, single differentiator is um, a feature we're calling Dynamic Game Day. Uh, And Dynamic Game Day has three primary uh, components. It has uh, next-gen stats. It's powered by next-gen statistics, which is real-time player data coming directly from the players on the field. They have little RFID chips in their shoulders, and we have that data that comes from them that feeds our um, animation uh, our AI, uh, our play calling, uh, and it's a really powerful tool to make the game <clears throat> incredibly realistic and performing like the real teams and players would. The next one is uh, kind of worth something we're calling a you know game day momentum, and so much like uh, much like you would have in uh, uh, the, the sport itself, there's an ebb and flow and a, and a home field advantage almost a, a, a part to the game. And we're really, al- we're allowed to show that off in all of its glory in each field or each stadium, uh, in the game, much like it in the real NFL has unique advantages, uh, and disadvantages for the opposing team, uh, that the player can, uh, leverage based on how they play on the field, either successfully or unsuccessfully. And that, home field or game day uh, advantage translates into momentum. Uh, your team can either, you know, obviously get the momentum or have the momentum work against you. And it can impact all kinds of things in the game uh, uniquely uh, from how easy it is to call a play, uh, run a route, uh, uh, kick a field goal. Uh, you know, hear your quarterback, you'll see, you know, play the quarterback actually touching his, his how many he won't be able to hear. And the players can harness that capability and they can leverage those things against their opponent or against the AI uh, when they're playing either for, for good or if you're on the other end of that spectrum, uh, you can have that impact and make the, you know, the game will become more challenging for you to play dynamically. Yeah, I remember uh, I've been playing Madden for a long time and I remember it was like 2007 or eight, there was a momentum feature or something back that this seems significantly more built out than that. And I love how it's, it's customized to the, to the unique, uh, you know, elements or, 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 you know, things that you would see in a particular stadium. Very, I, I want to know what LinkedIn is for Lincoln financial field, but I'll, I'll find that out here in a, in a couple of weeks right now. So I, I was uh, reading about the game and, and as someone who, um, I would say I spend actually a lot more time playing playing single player these days when it comes to sports games. And and one of the things that caught my mind was on the franchise. Uh, there's a face of the franchise, uh, uh, or there's the, the franchise mode, I should say, an upgrade to the franchise mode. We'll talk about face of the franchise in a second. But I don't hear too often an RPG skill tree system that's involved in like a sports game. But I, I do feel like Sports games playing solo are getting more and more like RPGs. I think it's really interesting. Can you talk about this and 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 your your thoughts on uh, you know how that progression works and and how you sort of like grind your way to success? I think in an RPG style in in Madden. Yeah, again, that another great question. I think and and your your comment is pretty spot on. I mean the the. Um, those of us uh, who working on Madden are, are, are huge gamers. Obviously, we're deeply passionate about Madden, you know. But we play a lot of other things that are influenced by the you know general the the uh, uh, trends and best in class services in the market and the RPG mechanics that we that we're putting in place for you to build a character uh, in our game really allow players to uh, with a, in a very flexible manner to customize 
the power and the progression of their character on the field. Um, and, and of course, you can play as a quarterback and as a running back and as a wide receiver. Uh, we've added a defensive uh, character archetype into the game this year, which is a, a first for us uh, uh, in this mode. Um, but the mechanics themselves are, as you described, and, and I think appropriate, are very flexible for the users to be able to earn and play and harness their success on the field to grow out their specific and unique game, game impact based on how they play. So really, at the end of the day, depending on the quarterback you want to become, if I can use quarterback for an example, um, we will allow you through this system to differentiate and lean into how you like to play quarterback by allowing you to invest you know, that, that into that RPG mechanic to build out those types of skills that make you a stronger player based on how you natively like to play anyways. Yeah, I was just seeing that video and just seeing where you can put the points in there. I just think is really cool. Tom Brady probably is maxed out. He should he should probably get more more square. It, hurt, it pains me to admit that, but but yeah, uh, <laughs> a special special fountain of youth system for for Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I, I'm the same age as Tom Brady, and and you know I'm <laughs> I am I am not Tom Brady. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the face of the face of the franchise. I we had uh, I brought that up a second ago, and so again, this is like a single player campaign. We've seen uh different evolutions of this uh throughout the last four or five years or so and uh but you all are sort of broadening this out in terms of uh class system and and things like that uh, you're not sort of locked into one one player so can you talk a little bit about uh united we rise yeah so the 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 uh, the bringing it back or, or based on the progression system that you were just talking about i mean it, it all kind of starts there you get to select a character uh, in one of the posi- the four positions, running back, qu- quarterback, running back, uh, wide receiver, uh, or on defense as well, and then you get to build that core that 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 character out as you see fit. First and primarily, starting with like the thing that matters most to Madden, which is your your uh, NFL fantasy career experience in face of the franchise. Um, this mode is about you. It's about your character. It's about your rise to NFL superstardom. The choices you make in this mode will dictate the scenarios and the challenges that are presented to you as you go through it. Um, And it really is a reflection of the mode itself, how it plays, how the media reacts to you, how your teammates react to you will all be a reflection of the choices you make in the mode, the type of player you are. um, And it's all based on foundationally that progression system that we talked about earlier. Um, And the beauty of the system is that it also applies to our other areas of the game as well, where your character can be used, which is the yard. Cross progression. And we love it. You know, putting in the yeah, effort in exactly. one place shows up in another mode. Always, always, uh, uh, it's respectful of time. And I think that's valuable. Speaking of that, uh, making my own segues here. So thanks for bearing with me here, Mike. Uh, new uh, a mode, Superstar KO, uh, a co-op eliminator mode for quick games. Sometimes people don't have time to play a full four quarters, you know, with, you know, generally, you know, five or even like, you know, longer, longer amounts of uh, uh, for quarter time. But t- tell us about Superstar KO and, and, and you know, sort of this quicker hit uh, version of a, of a multiplayer game. Yeah, I mean, Superstar KO was in Madden in 21. Um, and to your point, it's a very pick up and play, um, almost battle royale-esque play and continue your winning streaks. Very easy way, very accessible way for people to uh, play with the content that matters most in the game, which is like the NFL teams and the NFL stars. And in Madden 22, what we're doing is we're adding in all of the broader, deeper NFL teams uh, and some additional ways to play in that mode so that users or players who come into Madden have a very easy and pick up and play way where they can compete. And they can, like I said before, even from a winning streak perspective, they can continue to stay in game in the moment and, and uh, with their NFL team of choice uh, and uh, get rewarded as they play through, as opposed to, uh, you know, some of the other modes, which require a bit more of, of an investment, uh, whether you're progressing your character or, or classic franchise uh, that require a bit more of a, an investment of your time. This is a very, straightforward way to come in, um, get some of those rewards, some of that progression, uh, play with something that's a lighter lift in terms of the play calling and the, the win objectives, uh, but really still still feel the power of the NFL players uh, and the NFL content. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much for joining us from uh, EA Tiburon. And 
we get to play this next week, don't we? Yeah, early access starts, I think, tomorrow. Oh my God, it's almost here. And then worldwide launch is on the 20th. Um, I mean, we are, uh, we've been talking to our players all along. We're, we're building a game we hope they love. Um, we will continue to support it through live service all, all, all year round. Uh, and we're eager and, and, and uh, uh, kind of eagerly anticipating getting their feedback um, and, and building a stronger and better game for them as we do through our live services. But yeah, I mean, we're super excited um, about uh, where we're at with the game and we can't wait to get in players' hands. I Am Dead is a charming puzzle adventure game from the creators of Ho- Hohokam and Wilmot's Warehouse after exploring the afterlife and the Isle of Shelmerstein. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Richard Hogg, who's the artist and designer for the game. Richard, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to have um, an opportunity to talk about the game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let's talk about it. the game's out. It's available now uh, on Xbox. Tell us a little bit about what the title is. And while you do that, I'm going to play some of the video because it's a very, very interesting title that I, I want to make sure people understand what it's all about. Okay, yeah. Um, so I Am Dead is a game about a guy who's dead. <laughs> happens to be dead um but it's a game that deals with death in a way that's probably quite or hopefully quite radically different to how you see death a lot in in the world of video games and it's not about it's not a spooky or morbid game and it's not a violent game it's um it's a game um <sighs> like you said it's kind of a did you say puzzle it's it's kind of a puzzle game kind of a hidden object game okay it's a game it's a game where you're effectively a ghost and um as as kind of as you're seeing in this footage here it has this kind of mechanic where you're able to see inside things you're able to almost um slice away um buildings and and objects and things and and like this toaster here sort of see the inner workings of of machines and see inside um, fridges and inside plants, even and cupboards, and and you can look every you know because you're a ghost because the because the character who the game is about is a ghost. He sort of he, he in the afterlife he has this ability to kind of see inside things, and so we use that as a way of allow as a sort of unique way of allowing you to explore uh, a, a world in a video game and effectively you're looking for things and the things you're looking for are they're objects that meant something to some other people who are also dead so <laughs> there are other ghosts who you're trying to connect with and trying to talk to and and the way you do that is by finding these things we call them mementos but if finding objects that had some connection to them and their lives and um, and as you go through the game finding these things you sort of hear the story of of stories from their life and so it's kind of about even though it's about dead people it's kind of about their lives and how they lived more than more than about how how they died and in fact you don't really even find out how anybody died in the game it's not relevant yeah you know their actual death um does that all make sense? It it I th- it does to me because I played a little bit of the game, but I I, I think people that people that uh, are listening going, this is actually interesting. You know, I want to talk about how you came up with the concept of of the game, the gameplay loop of this you know, having objects and being able to, for lack of a better term, peel them back to understand and yeah. solve the puzzles. Tell me about that and how you came up with that concept. It's quite a hard thing to explain to people, like you just said, like peeling things back or slicing through a thing, and I. I'm, I don't like me and Ricky, who I work with. We we've collaborated for about 13 years making video games, and we we spend a lot of time pitching ideas for games to each other. And sure. um, I think one day I just sent him a. I found an animated GIF on the uh, on the internet where someone had sent fruit through an MRI scanner. Yeah. Uh, so like maybe someone who worked in a hospital on his lunch break put a banana through an MRI. Put it. Put his lunch looks, through the MRI machine. Yeah, yeah, and it looks amazing. It looks amazing. And I think I just sent that to Ricky and, and just said, imagine a video game that looks like this, you know, that works like this. And um, at the time, it was quite a weird idea to have. We'd never made a game at that point with any kind of three-dimensional sure. art assets. All our games had been flat two-dimensional games. So we knew, and we didn't know much about what the sort of technical challenges of, of of making this game would be. But we started investigating it and talking to people and thinking about it a bit more. And it, and over the course of quite a long time, 
it was just a thing that we had on the back burner that we were thinking about and it yeah. sort of evolved and and at some point we made a prototype and um and it instantly felt really good like it instantly just felt nice to be able to look at an object and you know, and i'm just picking a random thing up from my desk like look at a thing like a calculator i think there actually is a calculator in the game <laughs> yeah. um and you can rotate it you know you can look at it from all angles and then you have this very kind of um analog control of the of, of how you s- slice into it and see inside yeah. it yeah. and when you're playing the game that in itself is quite a pleasing and satisfying way of exploring things you know and then sometimes inside the thing there'll be something of interest or there might even be another thing that then you can focus on and you can drill down into that thing and yeah and you know in the game this goes there are bits in the game where this goes all the way from a large building down to a tiny matchbox yeah you know and you you you're looking inside things and you're um and so it's quite an unusual way of interacting with objects in a video game but it's quite intuitive and it's quite almost like mesmerizing really like some things just have an amazing like sometimes you you know as you slice through anything that has like um a regular pattern to it like a radiator or sure um, yeah oh like we saw the toaster like like the like the the blinds behind you in your room for instance would would look amazing if you were to slice through those you'd almost see like a strange pattern happening as yeah and and it's quite um it's quite a beautiful strange thing yeah and i'm really proud of of that aspect of, of, of of the game yeah Now, one of the things that stands out right away when you're playing it is certainly the puzzle mechanic, but the other thing is, of course, is the art style, which we're seeing here. Tell us about the art style, because it's this very relaxing kind of, you know, really, really beautiful sets that you've created. Yeah, uh, thank you. I... I'm responsible for the art style. I I guess my route into making games was as an art director or art person, and... um, like I was saying, this is the first game we've ever made using three-dimensional, you know, like art, art, you know, in an engine. Sure. Um, and I have no skills, or I do now, but at the time when we were coming up, you know, starting making this game, I had no skills in that area whatsoever. Right. But I was quite good at making images that look like they might be like the thing you started with there the the lighthouse the image yep. of the lighthouse with the island behind it actually isn't that is all just drawn in um a vector software thing it's not actually from the game at all right and um and yet it almost looks identical to how the game um how things look in the game and so i started figuring out an art style which was something that allowed me to art direct a game that had three dimensional things in them but where I could I could design them and and make concept art that then people could work from to yeah. make you know to make meshes, and it involved a bit of trial and error. But I kind of had some ideas and I was inspired by a few other things I'd seen and and it kind of just all happened organically really. Um, I yeah it was a it was like it became quite a sort of rich collaboration between me and the people. Uh, me and a couple of artists who I worked with who were like 3D artists on the game. Yeah. And we, we kind of came to an understanding where they kind of knew what I wanted everything to feel like and in the game. And um, and almost all of, you know, after the initial, after initially, I'm probably getting too into the technicalities here, but <laughs> after initially establishing the art style by making things that looked very, very close to a screenshot of the game, Right. We could relax a bit and I could just do like pencil sketches and things. And, um, right. and, and we'd sort of established a, a, what the rules were. I love that side of my job. I love kind of thinking like, what are the rules of how things look like both in terms well, of because it, because it's your world and you can define yeah. what the, what the rules are in the framework, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice to have rules and it's nice to like, in a way it's quite nice to have sort of limitations and I come from, um, before I worked in games, I come from a sort of graphic design background or illustration background. And I'm used to having those kind of really basic limitations. You know, you're making a poster that's going to be a screen print, but right. you're only allowed to use four colors. Right. And and that's a real foundation of how I work. And I think that, that comes, I think that that's a big part of what makes the art style of the stuff I make distinctive, I think. You know, one of the things is, you know, you're an artist and I'm an audio guy. And the music and soundtrack sounds lovely, but there's a, you know, the, 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 
the voice actor in there as well it's really it's really quite good and the main character's voice in i'm dead is 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 just so strong and it draws you in with the narration and so forth so that that's another thing again you can't show that in a screenshot you know you certainly can't but that's another thing that really that really really immerses you even deeper yeah i'll be honest it's a bit of development that i wasn't very involved with yeah um i um ricky who i collaborate with sort of took on uh that side of things more than i did and um you know i listened you know i listened to audition tapes and i had opinions but i um i i didn't really feel like i had much to offer in terms of voice acting whereas ricky loves it and he loves being um he loves being either in the room or on a on a call like this with somebody and feeding them the lines and talking to them about it and, and then hearing the lines and whatnot yeah, yeah. And, and honing that performance and and whereas i i don't have that much to offer in that um thing but the actual writing itself i was very involved with so the actual yeah. kind of what the, the words are. <laughs> yeah we worked with a writer uh we worked with a writer called katherine johnson who actually lives in the town that i i live in and i met her through just have, have happening to be a neighbor really and right but she's a a, a very experienced writers written lots of novels and and lots of tv uh stuff as well and um and to start with i was writing the stories and she was just giving me some sort of hit tips you know almost giving me like creative writing advice right she was guiding you (laughs) she was guiding me but she ended up actually taking a lot of it on and actually getting very involved and actually coming up with a lot of the ideas and she'd never worked on a game before in her life and that's interesting it's yeah. interesting you say that because when you take somebody who's worked in linear media, like books or television, like you said, having them working in a three-dimensional non-linear media can be kind of, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a learning curve for them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. I, I'd say that um, the, 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 story, the way that the stories tell themselves in our game is quite linear. You know, it's not like she didn't have to write branching narratives where sure. different things can happen based on the, the player's actions it doesn't really pan out like that in our game it's a bit more straightforward so she didn't have that challenge but even so you know she's someone who doesn't really play games and doesn't really you know it it was all a bit new to her and 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 i think sometimes i would be showing her things and telling her things and it'd be quite mind-boggling for her really you know Uh, but yeah it was it was um really nice collaboration and um She's actually in the game. She's the only real human being who who's actually made who is actually a character in the game as well. She's got oh, a very small part in it. Lovely touch. Now, I, I, admittedly, I'm at the beginning of the game and the first sort of quest, but you learn within the first few minutes how the game got its title. Now, based on the title in this early discovery, clearly the subject of death, big focus. Uh, how do you how did you approach creating a game about something that sometimes people don't want to talk about death, right? Yeah, it's interesting. We were working on another game, another idea for a game that was also kind of about um, death, and mm-hmm. didn't. It was a very different game with different mechanic, but but we had this idea that we wanted it to be a game where someone had died, mm-hmm. and you learn about their life through the possessions that they were um, that they they left behind, and um, so it was kind of a thing that was knocking around with us for a long time, and um, I think it's a subject that people people are very comfortable with death if it's right. presented in quite a kind of dramatic unrealistic way but less comfortable with things that depict death in um in a more realistic like how death actually function you know how it fits into our real lives kind of way and right and and i think we both were quite interested in the idea of making a video game that 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 spoke to that um like i like i've i've known people who've died and um and i i think about you know i think about people who 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 are no longer alive in my life a lot and i kind of yeah i i i wanted to sort of uh, not shy away from that and make something that was kind of about that but in but in totally not in a morbid way in almost in a way that almost sometimes feels like I'd go as far as saying celebratory. Um, and uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think it, I think we pulled it off. I think it works in this game. Well, it also, because yeah. the, 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 the environment you've created, you know, most people think death is, you know, scary and dark, but 
it, in in your artistic rendition, it's very it's colorful, it's light, it's this yeah, beautiful yeah. area that people are exploring. And then, of course, you know, hopefully death is not full. Real death is not full of puzzles, <laughs> but, you know, you, <laughs> yeah, <I hope> so. <laughs> you, you've got a, pu- you, you know, the puzzles tell the story. And that's what's really interesting in terms of finding the objects in the scene. And there's a lot of cues, like when you're close, you know, the controller will shake and things like that. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's hard to say this. I mean, not hard to say, it, but it's like people don't understand when I say, well, it's a cute, whimsical game about death, right? Yeah, I guess it kind of is. Yeah, yeah. Um we talked to, I don't know, like, yeah, there are things already in that exist that are like that, you know, like, for yeah. instance, we, while we were making this game, we talked about the film Beetlejuice a lot, because that's sure. a game, that's a film, did I say game? I meant, yeah. I meant film. Well, there was a game, um, if I recall correctly, but yes, I, oh, was there, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because that's a game that sort of deals with the idea of people being dead and, yeah. um, and it being a slightly more prosaic thing in their lives. Right. Or like um, the film Blythe Spirit is another yeah. good example for me of that. Um, and yeah, you know, what's that recent? There's a recent series with Ricky Gervais that's, that's where his wife's died and he's coming to terms with his wife having died. That's right. that I think is really lovely. It deals really, it's like a black comedy really, but it deals in a really honest way with these with these subjects. And and um, yeah, I, I, I I'm I yeah. I, I guess it was just a thing that we were drawn to. Um, yeah. yeah. But you also, I also want to point out you're, you, you've got a pretty small team that worked on this, right? So it's, you guys were able to be pretty agile during your development process. Yeah. I think, um, I think the way we work is that we, there's a core, there's me and there's a core sort of collaboration, which is me and Ricky. And then, and then we work with other people, um, um, who were mostly freelancers and right. people tend to come and go and but i think at, at the top it was maybe 10 maybe 12 people max worked on this game at any one time and most people were in it for like the ma- the majority of development it's not right. like we had people popping in and out constantly it's, but um yeah the team sort of grew and then it went down again and, um, yeah it, it ebbs and but, flows during the production cycle yeah and we've worked like that with a lot of different people over the years on various games and and I think it suits us and it suits them. Um, and um, and I like being, I like the word you used, agile. I like the idea of a smaller, t- trying to keep the team as small as you can. Yep. And um, making the thing, that, making the thing the size that it needs to be, the size that it kind of as a piece of art wants to be, rather than the size it needs to be to support whatever kind of um, studio structure you have, I think right. is a... Yeah, it's 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 a very fine balance to find that right sweet spot in between the two, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the pre- the game we made before I'm Dead, uh, Wilmot's Warehouse, was a yep. much smaller game when it was. That was for nearly all of development, just me and Ricky, and then another another programmer joined us, um, kind of towards the end. Um, but we but but it was never any more than well, musician. We had a musician as well, so never technically four people, and never right. any bigger than that, and. That's impressive. I couldn't imagine going. Yeah, I couldn't imagine going much more than than a dozen people. I don't think. I, I don't know, but I, I, I don't think I don't think the sorts of things I want to make need, will ever need right more more than that. And you and you, you talked about Wilmot's Warehouse. You also did another one called Ho Hokum, right? Tell us a little bit about those two games. Yeah, we made a so. The first game that me and Ricky made together was called Ho Hokum, which unfortunately is a PlayStation exclusive game. That's fine. Um, well, you know, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, it's kind of the thing that we started making. You know, I was working in a design company and he was working as a programmer um, for a company that made very early mobile games, like pre smartphone mobile games. And, um, like the little like snake on your Nokia, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> like Nokia Java games, and right. we started just making this game in our spare time. And uh, and what is Ho Hokum? It's quite a, it's a, all the games we make are really hard to explain to people. Um, Ho Hokum is like a, a very ambient game where you're a thing that looks a bit like a snake or a kite, right? And and it's very relaxing. It has no. Um, it's not it's not difficult ever sure it has no like obvious 
quests or um or or kind of objectives a lot of the time it's, it's just relaxing you, <laughs> yeah but there is lots to discover and lots sure. of, lots of interactions and lots of things to do in it but um but it's a very kind of um yeah it's very ambient uh, yeah. kind of chill kind of game very cu- colorful and it has an amazing soundtrack all artists who are on the record label uh, called ghostly international it's like mm-hmm. um and um then after that yeah then uh wilmot's warehouse um is a very different thing it's a game about working in a warehouse <laughs> about organizing things <laughs> it's a warehouse uh, simulator <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is just a warehouse simulator, but it's very, st- it's a very stylized, simple representation of that. And it, and it, again, it's quite colourful and quite cheerful. Um, but it's um, very much more video gamey, sure. in the sense that it it has like you can loot, you can fail, right? <laughs> and you can, there's a uh, fail state. Yeah, there's a fair, which is quite unusual for uh, for me. You know, most of the ideas I have for games aren't aren't like that. But uh, yeah, and then that- Wilmot's Warehouse, it, yeah, it, um, yeah, it's very much a reflection of me that game and my experience of my experience of jobs working in warehouses. Right. Yeah, I used to work. I always loved it. I used to work in a warehouse as well, so I know exactly what you're talking about. After I played Wilmot's Warehouse, I know what that's like. Yeah. Did you enjoy working in a warehouse? I did not. <laughs> Oh, really? Sorry. <laughs> no, it, it was one of my. It was one when I was a young. When I was, I was, I was early in in my in my college years, and it was. Uh, I was. I worked. I'll just say this. I worked with a very colorful cast of characters. <laughs> I'll okay, just say yeah. that. Okay. I should make a video game about that. That gang. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> I had one warehouse job that I absolutely loved. Oh, really? My boss was my boss was cool, and everyone there was nice, and and I just loved the challenge of knowing this no like becoming very intimately familiar with this quite complicated space where there's hundreds of different items i had to know where they all were and right and i had to be efficient going around it right putting things away taking things out yeah i also worked in a in a library for a bit and that was a similar yeah similar well it's a warehouse of books <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, yeah it was actually the library i worked in was a was, was a film stills archive. oh so it wasn't it wasn't books it was mostly packets of photographs right um but yeah a similar thing in there just just um just the pleasure of of becoming one with this kind of amazingly complex kind of environment that's full of information yeah or full of full of stuff full of stuff you know yeah yeah Fascinating. Well, I'm I'm literally looking forward to that. Folks, check out I uh, I am dead. It's it's out last week, so it's available now. It's available on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. I got to tell you, Richard, congratulations on on you know on on shipping the game. I know that every time you ship a game, that's a huge milestone. So I need to congratulate you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So congratulations to you and your team, and and thank thanks for joining me today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been really nice talking to you. Thank you very much for asking me to to do this. I Am Dead, it's now available. Let me tell you, that, that game did not look what you thought a game called I Am Dead right. was going to look like, did it? It's sort of in the in the realm of, you know, spirit fair in terms of like, it, it deals with, you know, death, but also, but it looks very cheerful. In a is, light, which is scary good. way. We're going to slice things open, so. It does look really interesting, actually, that game. Oh, all right, all right. You got the gloves on and either it's time for my annual exam or <laughs> you've got a new controller. <laughs> Or a new piece of art. Yeah, so we'll, while you get the news ready, I know you're going to be showing us the news a little bit. We yeah. announced this controller last week, which is the Aqua Shift controller. And I wanted to show that off because one of the interesting things about this controller uh, for Xbox Series X and S is it's really quite... Hold on a minute. Let me, uh, box over. It's got some, a, new, some new little features, aren't there? Yeah, look at that. It's got a nice, It's got a really nice sheen if you look behind it. That's the Shift that yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, you can okay. see you can see it's kind of like this nice little. It's got the rubberized grips under there. Uh, it's got the textured. It's got a, you know things are textured there as well. But it's this is just a really really nice nice controller. I mean it's it looks it looks stunning. So uh, I, well, let's see, can you turn it to the side, just like a, a profile view. Sure, I can, Jeff. For the camera. So okay. Oh, so the so the grip goes all the way up there to the side. That is that like sort of like a pliable where that wavy. Yeah. Look is is that like a Yeah, everything a everything everything that's got that wavy look is is rubberized. I like that. 
I like so that. this is this is actually I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this thing in and uh, I'm gonna use this as one of my primary controllers. I just love this color. I just love the color. It's because cool it's like in the middle, it's like more blue, but towards the edges, it looks like it gets a little purpley. Yeah, that, that must be that shift. Yeah, that aqua shift. That uh, that's Jeff. That's why they call it the aqua shift. So there we go. I'm not in marketing, but you know, you know, I gotta I gotta put the I gotta put the batteries in here while you talk about our news because I'm looking at the center and I want to see something. What do you want to do? You want to see how how the Nexus lights up? Yeah, exactly. It looks it looks like it's got a little blue action going in there. No, that can't be the case. I can't believe marketing would let us do that. So let's let's go ahead and put that in there. Pop them in. Um, yeah. So You're that's on the air. So make sure you get it the right way. Don't put the the head at the tail. The the positive positives and the negatives, and the negatives and the positive. Let's turn it on here. This is like diffusing a bomb, but in reverse. In okay. Uh, it's flashing. It, it's kind of got a blue. Normal. It's kind of got a actually. I can't kinda, tell. Let me let me let me let me sync it to my Series S over here. Let's see if it'll do it. Push the. You have to push the button. I did. There it goes. Oh, just turned it off. Um, yeah, it's got a nice. It's got a really nice blue there, and I'm, I'm I'm a little stunned at how actually how cool it is. So let's see. There it goes. All right. Oh yeah yeah. Oh, it's flashing again for some reason. Oh, I see it because it's back. Anyway, so that's that's a that's the brand new controller that we've got out. Or it's coming out soon. You can uh, check out my blog at majornelson.com and details on news.xbox.com for all of your uh all of your all of your news. It's end of the month, I want to say, is when we'll be seeing that. One. I really like I'm that. I'm I'm, I'm, take, well, I'm taking I'm taking it by when you come over to fix my internet and um just put it down on the kitchen table and don't worry about it it's safe there. Uh, I'm, yeah, it's I'm safe. really I'm really taken aback by this one Jeff and I I don't know why. I mean it's just I've I like I like I just like the color. Yeah. I mean it is yeah. it's handsome. It's handsome. All right, here you go. You ready? Here, here's here's your that. thumbnail, Jeff. I need I need your I need your reaction face. So <laughs> That's all I have. Anyway, um, let's, you know, how many other YouTube channels do, do thumbnails right live on the air? None of them. None of them. Most of them, I think. Probably. Okay. Maybe, maybe. they do. Anyway, what do we got for news, maybe. Jeff? We got it. We got a pretty big, uh, pretty big it's week a busy, going on. A news, a newsy, newsy week. So as you can see behind me, we announced the Gamescom 2021 Xbox stream. Please to announce that is going to be hosted by our good friend, good friends, Paris Lilly and Kate Yeager. Hey, I'm Paris, so excited you know to have Paris back. He was he joined us uh, back in June for the showcase, and and I've known Kate forever. Kate and I used to do a bunch of different shows together, yeah. so it's great to see them back. Well, and Kate, uh, Kate is Kate is you, Kate is the host of like Apex Legends uh, regional tournaments, so you right. see her all the time there. Paris, you know from Gamertag Radio, and of course from the Kind of Funny X Cast, and uh, you know what? Are, uh, we're going to see him. What goes. do you say we yeah. see if we can get him on in the coming weeks? I would love to have him on here, and I think he would enjoy being on the show. Yeah, so, I'd love to have. Uh, I'll, I'll work, we'll, let's let's work on that. So thank thank you for telling us about the um, about. In fact, I'll bring it up so you can see. There you go. What else you got? Sure. Yeah. So that stream is going to be taking place on August twenty fourth, ten a.m. Pacific. That is uh, uh, one o'clock, one p.m. Uh, uh, on the Eastern time, and six p.m. Uh, in England, seven p.m. in German time. So everyone will be able to watch and enjoy and. Uh, I will be reading here from Xbox Y. You'll get in-depth updates from some of our previously announced Xbox Game Studios titles alongside some of our third-party partners, including some incredible titles coming to Xbox this holiday, upcoming releases to Xbox Game Pass, and much, much more. So, yes. you'll, of course, you'll want to watch. Yep. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's just a few weeks away. It sure is. Uh, something we just had this week, which was a really good watch on Twitch, was the Twitch Gaming... ID at Xbox Showcase. Oh, yeah. So we had some uh, good friends of the show, uh, Strawberry17 and Steve Saylor, the blind gamer, uh, really introducing a, a large number of indie games that are coming to ID at Xbox. Good amount of those are, are coming out on Xbox Game Pass as well. Some of these are out now, like Sam and Max Saves the World Remastered. That just, it was like a instant drop right after release. Uh, games like Origami 2, Evil Genius 2, Library of Ruina, uh, paparazzi, um, and, paparazzi. Uh, Stardew Valley are coming to Xbox Game Pass. I mean, Stardew Valley is an all timer uh, game that really jumped out at me uh, as being really like I, I really want to play is Ali Ali World. Um, it's a skateboarding action platform. And there's there were a couple different Ali Ali games. I think there were two of them uh, previously. This is 
looks completely different though. Um, and sort of like this, this wide open, beautiful looking world with like heavy customization. You can create your border to look like whatever. Got very into watching the skateboarding during the Olympics. And this is obviously very different from a game like skate or like, you know, more of a core skating game. It seems like more of a you know, platforming action game, uh, but that will be coming out this winter. Uh, definitely recommend you at least uh, at the minimum skim through on Xbox Wire, but you can all, of course go to twitch.tv slash Twitch Gaming, yep. uh, where they do a great show called The Weekly every week, but you can watch the archive on that. And a lot of great trailers, a lot of really interesting things. Oh, RPG Time, that was another one that jumped out at me. Looks like pencil is being drawn on paper and it's yep. uh drawing you know the game as, as you play and i, I just look awesome so the indies the, the indie devs are just the ones who push this is why my controller wasn't working i had to update the firmware there we go oh you got update <laughs> so it's updating <laughs> well, you're applying the update there we go real time update here yep. uh want to talk about a game that also caught my eye this week which is coming to xbox game pass next week and that is Humankind. So this is coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC. It's made by Sega and uh, Amplitude Studios. It's what they call a, a 4X game. And sort of the platonic ideal of a 4X game is civilization. Explain 4X for those of the people that don't know. It, it, it's, I, I don't know what it stands for, but it's uh, <laughs> but it's like a game like Civilization where you sort of, you know, you take over the world. You can do it peacefully. You, can, you win against other nations. Sometimes it's a military conquest in Civ. You could be the first to make it to Alpha Centauri, I want to say. Um, you can have a cultural victory or financial victory. There's way, ways of, you know, sort of- You can have an emotional victory, Jeffrey. Yeah, maybe they have that in this, <laughs> you know, whoever's the happiest nation. So That's right. you win this time, Denmark. Um, so, um, or Canada, I, I don't know. But Norway, uh, anyway, whatever. it looks really interesting. And uh, there's a, a lot of different uh, historical cultures from the ancient times through the modern times. Anyway, really looked interesting. And well, it's coming out to Xbox Game Pass for PC and Ultimate on, on PC. Yep. And uh, definitely want to be checking that out. I want to say it's August 17th which is, uh, you know, next week. I uh, want to talk about a couple of things that our, our, our social good team is doing, our social impact team. Uh, one is honoring uh, indigenous peoples for uh, International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. Um, and uh, in doing so, uh, talking about some of the ways that that Xbox is is uh, you know saluting or honoring uh, Indigenous peoples during this time, so one is then Minecraft Education Edition, um, where there is uh, content to check out there. Um, World's Edge, uh, who makes uh, the Age of Empires games, Age of Empires Three, is focusing on uh, authentic Indigenous representation, um, and there's. Uh, Indigenous communities in Mexico are being uh, celebrated um, with some design controllers. All of the information there, I don't do it justice, but uh, Jen Panettone, she does do it justice, and she wrote about it. We on need to Xbox get Jen Wire. on the show. I had her on a few months ago. She's, 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 she runs some really cool programs, doesn't she? She does. Uh, she's uh, she's a, a great member of the team, someone we work with on a lot of stuff, like whenever yeah. we do stream takeovers, uh, like, uh, you know, in celebration of, of things like Hispanic Heritage Month, which is yeah. coming up in the middle of September. Yeah. Um, she's always who we, who we partner with. She's also uh, working on um, how Xbox is partnering for the Special Olympics with a, a yeah. gaming Talk about sports this. tournament. Yes. Yeah, so that's going to be coming up also in the middle of September, uh, September uh, 12th through the 14th. And how do you get involved? You watch. It's going to be um, broadcast on Twitch, and um, we're going to be uh, bringing together athletes through the Special Olympics uh, to compete in Rocket League in Madden NFL 22, Forza Motorsport 7. And uh, the, some folks will be even playing along, like, athletes and stars like Jason Tatum who plays for the Celtics or Jamal Charles and some WWE superstars. So some really cool stuff happening there. It starts off on Sunday, um, uh, September 12th on the Xbox Twitch channel and on the Special Olympics YouTube channel. I'm sure we'll be talking more about that as we get closer to that. Of still course about we will. Away, but really cool. And we should definitely see how we, you and I, Larry, can get involved. Oh, I love, I love, I love doing things like that. So we should totally find a way to do it. Uh, more stuff for those of us who are Xbox Game Pass <laughs> subscribers. The, the, the gifts keep giving. No, no I just, it's just the way you said that, more stuff. That's what Chuck uh, Chuck Barris used to say in um, in the Gong Show. We'll be back with more stuff. More stuff. 
Like people so, want stuff. I and know. And if you've got Game Pass, man, all the stuff. And this stuff is from Codemasters. As, as we know, Codemasters, uh, folks have made you know, Dirt 5 and yep. Grid Series. Um, uh, they're part of EA now. And therefore, their titles are now part of EA Play. And EA Play, the vault, is part of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. It's a, it's, 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 it's a nice chain. Look so that. that means uh, games like... Um, F1 2019 and 20, Dirt, uh, wait, Dirt 5 is, okay, uh, Dirt 4, uh, you know, all, these games are uh, uh, Dirt Rally, Dirt Rally 2.0, Grid, uh, they're all coming to uh, EA Play. So, um, in fact, uh, right, they're they're there now, so that's cool. Uh, hey, achievement check? unlocked. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Why don't we use that more often? I, I don't want to burn it out. I've got that, and of course I have. Oh, that's the rare one. Yeah. So we can give that we can give that rare achievement to uh, to the folks at Ninja Theory who optimized Hellblade this week, Hellblade: yep. Senua's Sacrifice for Xbox Series X and S. And we've got some great video over on Xbox Wire. Of course, you can just go ahead and download it and you can yep. update it as part of Xbox Game Pass. But um, uh, some really cool, uh, uh, like they, they show how it looks at 30, 60, 120 frames per second. And uh, I just think that's. I am it, very it much looks, looking it's already, forward. Already a good looking game. I'm already. I'm very much looking forward to checking out 120 frames a second on my on my uh, TV behind me. Very yeah. excited. That's available now, so you could you could even end the show early and try that now if you wanted to. Um, but if you want to finish the show, you could just download that. Or so, I could download uh, it while I'm while out. we're while we're kibitzing here. See, now you're thinking. Now you're <laughs> thinking. Uh, the Age of Empires series, so obviously we know Age 4 coming out later this in in the fall, but it uh, doesn't mean Age 2 and Age 3. So we talked about Age 3 and, and Indigenous Peoples representation. Age 2 has some new content, and that is the Dawn of the Dukes, which is part of Age 2, the Definitive Editions, three new campaigns. Uh, anyway, available now on Microsoft Store and on Steam, uh, yep. where I know a lot of folks are playing Age 2. Uh, it's an all-timer, Larry. So uh, get out there and enjoy the the dawn of the Dukes. Get Another update that I thought was really interesting. Uh, again, Game Pass, feeling like a broken record here, but like the best kind of broken, right? Uh, is MLB the show twenty one? Yep. They added something really cool. So uh, we'll see how on the ball you are, Larry. Yes. If you build it, they will come. Yes. What does that mean to you? What am I supposed to do? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to download. Not, if you build it, they will come. What is, what is that? What is that from? That's from uh, Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Yeah. And Field of Dreams, they put the Iowa Cornfield baseball arena. No, they did not. In, yes, in MLB The Show. Like, literally okay. you hit the home run of the corn. So uh, that's a, it's actually a free update, uh, which is available now. Uh, for MLB The Show uh, 21, which, of course, is part of Xbox Game Pass on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. And, yeah, you can play on the cornfields of Iowa. Sorry, um, you, you can also install, install Hellblade. <laughs> you could do that, too. The only thing I'm not sure about is if like, if they step over the foul line, do they become old? I don't know if that happens. Oh, that, 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 now that, that would be an happened. interesting angle. That would be, that would be a feature, maybe. Maybe that'll come out down the line, but it just looks really cool. If you want terrible features for game ideas, this is the place to turn. Yeah, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. <laughs> Your player becomes 80, but they do save that kid from choking. What? Um, what? I mean, what? You don't have a movie from 1989, like top of mind in in, in your head? Is it that far? Anyway. Oh my, my goodness, it's a long it time a long ago. Run. All right. Real quickly, also yeah. just want to call out, there's been a, a real rise in sort of, I would call them like sort of, mundane yet satisfying actions being turned into a game. I know some people on Steam are playing like this pressure wash game. Um, there's a game called Lawn Mowing Simulator that right. is now available. Yeah, I saw uh, that. For Xbox Series X and S. And look, you get to mow like some of the best lawns in the world. And while that might sound unusual, these, these things can be very well, Jeffrey, what what challenges. are the best lawns in the world, man? I said, now, let's get, are, are we mowing outfields at, at baseball fields? Are we mowing pitches? I, mean, I think that would be cool. I'm looking at, at footage of like lawn, a did you, lawn did, in a castle. Did you mow, did you, um, did you mow the lawn, mow lawns growing up when you were a little kid? No, because okay. I grew up in the city and we didn't really have lawns. Okay. So um, I shoveled snow. Um Actually, what we would really do is with snow, we would very quickly shovel the snow, and then we'd knock on someone's door and go, we shoveled your path for us. So um, You shook them down? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a shakedown. It was sort of like, <laughs> it's, it's, 
exactly what I would call it. I was too young to be shaking people down. It was just extortion. Proactive. <laughs> so. it, it was proactive. We didn't like put the snow back. I don't think we put the snow back on there. <laughs> they didn't that, I, I, the reason I ask is because you, know, you talked about lawn mowing simulator. I remember when I was mowing along, we had a big backyard uh, and I used to do it. I, you know, it's always about cutting them in the different, you know, the diagonals and the straights, you know, making yeah. the design. So I wonder if you could do that. Like lawn mowing mowing simulator yeah. is for you. And I expect a report next week that you'll have played it. And I, uh, game, game budding game developers out there, I need you to make a snow shakedown game. <laughs> For snow shovel simulator snow shovel shakedown Shoveling. game <laughs> you know you have different shovels you maybe you can you save up you get like a snow blower or, or maybe like that just maybe mr plow will appear <laughs> i that i mean think of the tie-ins here you, yeah. you could do a whole big launch at universal you know simpsons world and everything oh, this he's pretty much taking care of their marketing plan for them for this non-existing game <laughs> oh boy anything anyway, else last thing I yeah. uh, just want to talk about, I, we, you know, it's a game we've been talking about for a long time and it's out next week, uh, 12 minutes. Yeah. So you can pre-download it now uh, on, on Xbox One and Series X and S. Uh, it'll be available, uh, it looks like 9 a.m. Uh, on the 19th of August. So we'll, awesome. before we talk to you next, I think, we'll be, yeah. you'll, be, you'll be able to play this we'll be game. We'll playing but, it. Uh, there's some great celebrities in the game and uh, it looks really, James McAvoy, Daisy Ridley, uh, William Defoe. I need to get Daisy, Daisy Ridley, Ridley in, on the show. Wasn't wasn't Daisy Ridley in? Oh, she was she was in Star Wars. Never. Mind. I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking, but she was I did not know she was in Star Wars. <laughs> I was mixing up Daisy Ridley with the person who was in um, the actor who was in Pirates of the Caribbean. Kira Knightley. Kira Knightley. <laughs> Kira Knight. Daisy Ridley could be Kira Knightley's younger sister. <clears throat> okay. All right. I, I I feel like that's the case. I've never uh, seen them both in this. In case place. you want to uh, straighten Jeff out, just hit him up at his social handle right there. You can't <laughs> get this. <in>, it. So. <laughs> anyway, that's 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 that for the news, Larry. Uh, well, that's a lot for for the middle of August. Just a reminder: Hellblade, send you a sacrifice, optimized as we go. Downloading it's, it pretty quickly there, three hundred seventy three Mbps. I want that. I want that kind of performance in this house. That's what well, I I'm going to come over and deliver it for you, Jeffrey. Hey, um, let's see what else we got. I think that's really about it this week. It's uh, it's been a it's been a busy week, as you said. In games, there's no there's no quiet time in gaming anymore. Here we are. That's good though. That's good though. Uh, anything you want to add before we wrap up? And I'll let you go. Hopefully, Rebecca will come back next week. I haven't heard from her. Hopefully, she's going to come back. Did she ghost us? Yeah, she's traveling. I was okay. Hopefully, she didn't ghost the show. Instagram. So um. no, she wouldn't. She wouldn't do that. <laughs> She, 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 everyone's entitled to a break, including you. Larry. I know. I'm trying to figure out how we would do a show without you. It'd be messy, but we could we could just do it in like MS Paint. Can we do that? Uh, by the way, you could do it in Excel. Do it. do it in Excel. Here we go. Um, by the way, I, 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 I mentioned this to you on when you were away, when you were on holiday. Is uh, you can we you know Twitter Spaces can now have co-hosts. Yeah, you had mentioned that. Um, so I think we should check. People are people really clamoring to hear more of us. I don't think so. But I'm just saying that the times that I'm not, because because to be fair, doing this show, I know people enjoy the hour or whatever it is, hour and a half away, but it takes, there's like a lot of prep work that goes into the show. And that's, so anyway, when I take the time off, it's not just the hour. It's probably a lot more than that. But anyway, maybe we can do it. Maybe we can do a spaces. Maybe you just leave your camera going. Give me the key to your house. No. And then I'll just show up. I'll pop into that chair. This way you come home, it'll be nice and warm. I'll leave the white like gloves for you. Chair. You can leave the white gloves. I'll find something to unbox. We'll just and go through your closet or something. I don't and we'll know. be good to go. It'll be great. We'll be All right, Jeff, we will thank you for coming back to the show. I know there was a question whether you're going to join us again. So thank you for, <laughs> thank you for coming back. Good Let's try and get some other guests on here because I thought that was that was really enjoyable uh, yeah. last week. Well, we'll work on getting Paris and, uh, on so we can talk about the, the game. Paris, Paris, you're next. Yeah, yeah, Paris, we're coming after you, my friend. All right, gang, we'll see you next week. Uh, if you want to follow Jeff and I on social, you know how to do that at Major Nelson at Jeff Rubenstein. That's the complaint desk. Do the Jeff, do you want to do your we haven't done the like and subscribe pitch in a while. You want to do that now? Barry, yeah, no one's been video. liking and or subscribing, but oh, yeah, uh, we love reading your comments, especially on YouTube, uh, which is the easiest place to see those comments. But if you're listening on audio, those uh, reviews really do help us, help yes. guide us uh, into what to do and what not to do. So please do it. And uh, but we're 
we're here for you. So let us know. Uh, please make yourself be heard. All right, Jeff. We'll see you guys. We'll see everybody next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe wherever you are. Make sure you wear your sunscreen. Stay cool. It's hot. Uh, it's hot out. Yeah, stay cool, everybody. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, everybody.